How to make a coal-fired steam engine boiler plant, part 2. Making the boiler ash pan and mounting. The main base for the boiler to stop it falling over is a lump of cast iron. But what I'm going to do is machine the other side of this cast iron to give me a really nice ash pan and then mill away part of it so I can clear the ashes. And talking about ashes, one of the viewers mentioned a few weeks back that he would like me to speak at his funeral. And oddly enough, after a friend of mine died a couple of years ago, I thought about doing this, Cremovision. Why have a boring funeral when you can have a professionally made video on DVD to give to the mourners? A good idea, I thought, but uh, the phone never rang. So I decided to make model steam engine videos instead. I'm currently facing this piece of cast iron, and I must add at this point that this is a very nice piece of cast iron as far as pieces of cast iron go. No blow holes, and it's cutting really smoothly. And just to explain what blow holes are, it is absolutely nothing to do with marine mammals. It's to do with the sand casting process. Sometimes you'll be machining a piece of cast metal and it's machining very well and looking good and you get nearly to the last operation and suddenly a big hole appears in it. Or a sequence of very small holes appears in the casting. And when that happens to me, I discard the casting. Generally, casting suppliers will just replace the casting with a new one. The facing process is almost completed. There we go. Nicely finished. A quick touch with the file to get rid of the sharp edges. Now it's time to remove the inside jaws and replace them with outside jaws. And this will make it possible to hold the 5 inch diameter piece of cast iron in the chuck jaws without the chuck jaws hitting the bed. As I said in a previous video, this is a great old lathe. It has a very wide bed and it's very rigid. The only problem with it is, the centre height is only 6 inches, which is quite small. I can't turn large diameter objects in this lathe. With the piece of cast iron turned round in the chuck now, I'm just machining it so that I leave a centre section exactly the same diameter as the bottom part of the boiler. You'll see how it all goes together very shortly. For the component to look right, it's quite important that the register on this is exactly the same diameter as the bottom of the boiler so I'm checking it frequently with a pair of calipers. And here I'm cleaning off the front part of the rough casting of the centre section. As far as machining goes, I quite enjoy machining cast iron. I love the way it cuts. It's got a high carbon content, so you don't need to use coolant anyway, and it's self-lubricating, well, until you speed it up too much and it burns the edge of the tool away. And I'm pleased to announce that not only are these castings free of blowholes, they're not chilled either. Every part of the casting is machining very well. I've talked about chilled castings before, but I still get questions about it. So once again, what is a chilled casting? As far as I'm aware, and I'm no metallurgist or metallurgist, metallurgist, depending on which part of the world you come from, the pronunciation could be different. Chilling of a casting occurs when part of the casting cools too quickly and it becomes glass hard and the tool just skates over the surface and the only way you can get through it is to grind it away. And sometimes you can get through the chill, other times it goes very deep into the casting. Areas of a casting that can be chilled are usually the thinner parts. For instance, cylinder covers, they're quite thin, and small steam chest covers can often be chilled because of such small pieces of cast iron. But no such chilling is taking place on this casting, it's machining beautifully. Now I have to remove this entire lump in the middle. It was initially useful for holding the part in the chuck, but now it has no function and it's definitely in the way. I don't want a lump like this right in the middle of the ash pan. And please note, I have speeded up this video considerably because this is quite a long process. I centre drilled the casting and then drilled quite a large hole down the centre of it, being very careful that the drill did not come through the other side, and this just saves a bit of cutting time. And it also makes it much easier because I can now use a boring tool, and this one I know is stuck out a long way from the tool post, but it's so you can see it in the video. I always find there's something strangely satisfying about using a boring tool like this. Normally, a boring tool is for boring cylinders, or just making nice holes in things. This video clip is speeded up to 2000%, so it really is going much faster than in reality. 
I apologise in advance for the play on words, but if I ran this in real time, the boring tool really would be boring. But thanks to the technological marvel of video, this has really speeded the job up. When I first put this video up on YouTube, two people immediately commented and pointed out that I said parting tool instead of boring tool. So just for the people who took the time to comment and said that I'd done it wrong, I really do apologise. I did mean to say I can't use the boring tool anymore. Not without drilling another hole anyway. So I re-edited the voiceover and re-uploaded the video. But I don't want to drill another hole. This would solve the problem only temporarily. What I'm going to do is change the tool for my modified parting tool that I used in a previous video. This boring tool has been great for the rough cutting. Had I have used the parting tool for this, I would probably have broken it by now. This boring tool has got one more job to do, and this is machining the outer part, the inside edge of the register. I'm being quite careful here because this part of the work is still the original rough casting. And as you can see, there's plenty of dust coming off as I cut it. When all is said and done, I'm making an ash pan for a steam engine boiler. So really, I could have just left this and left it rough cast on the inside. But no, I do like to see a finished component, so I'm taking the time to do a little bit more machining and clean up the inside edge. Before I start the finishing operation, I need to make sure that I haven't gone too thin with the centre section of the casting. And because of the physical shape of the casting and the position of it in the chuck, I can't use a micrometer. So I use a pair of these. I have a lot of these kicking about in the workshop and I still use them, they are very useful. A very low tech piece of equipment, but if used properly can be very accurate indeed. So according to my pair of calipers, that's the thickness of the cast iron part. So I've got plenty of scope to do a little bit more machining. And this is the tool I'm going to use, my modified parting tool. It's not very strong and I have to be careful with it. And the only way I can film this so you can see what's happening is to hand hold the camera above the lathe. That high pitched squeaking sound you can hear is because the tool is very thin and it vibrates a bit. And here's the boiler ash pan and mounting unit on the bench with the boiler sat on top of it. The boiler will of course need to be elevated above the ash pan mounting. And for this I'm going to use four columns. And also I need to be able to clear the ash away from the boiler's ash pan very quickly. So I'm going to machine part of it away. This will be done using the milling machine at a later date. I've stuck a couple of pieces of green masking tape on the base to show what I mean. I will be machining approximately the area between the two pieces of green tape, removing it completely so I can just scrape out any ash from below the boiler. Here is the mounting idea I have. I don't mean to use horrible square pieces of brass like this. These will be machined to quite an ornate shape to make them look like Victorian stanchions. I've put the top cap on and this is the next thing to machine. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.